Precious world at large. Uh, this is Lori Hanau, and I'm privileged to be a part of uh, the team here at Global Roundtable Leadership, along with Sebastian. Sebastian, maybe give a wave, and uh, Kate, and Melissa, and Travis, and Tristan, and Dhruv is on. Uh, Dhruva Jagesia is is on sabbatical but here with us in spirit for sure. And two times now, we've, we're, we're, uh, we may be turning this into a habit that, that, that is, uh, that we're, that's making us feel good and that we hope uh, is uh, useful and of service uh, to anyone who comes across these, these videos. But two times now we've made videos on uh, the past couple of Mondays and we wanted to do it again today. And, uh, our work is very much about how we share leadership. We do training and co-creation work with teams in uh, how we share leadership and share power together. And we felt it was so fitting to talk about how we share leadership in times of crisis, which we are certainly in now. And I wanna name that one of our pillars, we have four pillars of, uh, pillars of inclusion for sharing leadership. And I'm just gonna name our first pillar right now, which is the pillar of our humanity. And it's about leading with our humanity before we lead in roles, with our roles and status and expertise, that it's a shift of consciousness to leading relationally before leading positionally. And with the idea that we are leading our lives all the time, um, even if we don't self-identify as leaders with all that we do, all the choices we make, all the ways we treat ourselves and each other, and how important it is to, to cultivate the relational skills and to do that in a way of sharing power with each other and how we team. And so this is called the pillar of our humanity. And uh, I bring this up as a um, way to introduce us or, or open up the, the conversation here into how we share leadership in times of crisis, because even for those that care to collaborate or uh, share power and, uh, and share ownership and, and, and lead together, when we go into crisis, it can be very, very easy to go back um, or to, to go into scarcity and scarcity thinking or fight or flight thinking um, or command and control thinking and how we may lead. And we forget that we can uh, take that not only can we, but how important it is to uh, take our, our teams and our uh, families and our other stakeholders actually within our business, our outside suppliers and others along with us so that we all go down the, the, uh, the river of this journey together. And I just wanna name that we're seeing this, like we're actually seeing what we, what we hear call shared leadership the world is seeing right now in many ways as we talk about, as you see so many different uh, leaders, government leaders and, and, and artists and, and, and many others uh, talk about our togetherness and how we're gonna get through this together. And it takes our togetherness and it takes our understanding of our interconnectedness and, um, and how we're seeing that and how people are stepping out to applaud the healthcare workers in New York and Brooklyn every night at seven o'clock and how, People are singing together and singing to each other in Italy, right out out the bal their balconies, and and people are paying for each other's wages, and so many ways that we're having examples of what for us is sharing leadership uh, to advance our humanity and our the health of our systems and uh, our global health. And so uh, I just want to name this framing, and then I want to step back so that uh, we see what I uh, what ideas are. <laughs> everybody has for um, what you want to say about how we share leadership in times of crisis, what you want to offer. I'll jump in and um, you know, the, the prompt has taken me back to a time in my life where I was 
the chef and operating partner of a restaurant and we were struggling um, and uh, struggling and also um, in you know for several years in a row I think I, I took about five days off a year um, and uh, of complete days and that's unfortunately not an exaggeration um, and and I remember um, and I think this is what I want to speak to, right, is I remember in myself before I had the vocabulary for understanding what shared leadership is or why, you know, sort of the sophistication of, of, a, of a more training in organizational leadership, I remember craving the, um, craving both the need to step out of the craziness to sort of be able to look at the whole, but also craving um, more honesty and openness about the situation that we were in um, and feeling feeling my own isolation uh, from the team that was so committed to the restaurant and to our future but but unaware of the gaps and and in a way it, it made it so much harder for me to even manage the day-to-day -day because I couldn't speak to the larger truth of what you know that we were we were in the process of going out of business and um, and then to, to contrast that with, with a moment where we decided to make a major change and we brought the whole team, all of this, every single one of the staff down to the hosts and the, you know, the bussers, everybody, and sort of shared the need and the, the moment that we were in and the opportunity that we were taking to try to reimagine re ourselves and reinvent ourselves uh, and to get their feedback and how much better that felt. Um, and so I, I think about these times and I think about how we often cling to this notion that we can't share what is difficult, that we can't ask the lowest person in the business to give us coaching and mentorship or strategic thinking. Um, but I would say we, that the, those, are, those are false assumptions. And I would also say that the spaciousness of knowing that everybody was actually thinking about the same thing together uh, without those barriers of information of selective knowledge actually made it easier for me to lead not harder um, and and it's you know, i i know now to seek out ways to do that but there it was sort of like it it finally happened and i was able to experience that mm. yeah thank you so much and i just want to riff off what you said we, we i don't want to distract from this but the, our second pillar of being equal learning partners, right, is even shifting the mindset that there's a lowest person in the business, but that first and foremost, we're equal in what we have to learn and contribute. And so I thank you for bringing forward that pillar uh, along with the pillar of our humanity and, and what it meant for you to be vulnerable and open and honest uh, and, to, and to step into that yourself in order to be able to have others engage in an honest way with you you know, in your leadership. Tristan, your story reminds me of a, um, a time when I was an executive director at an organization. I got a phone call on my way in at 7.30 from the first person in the building who said, uh, I've got some bad news. The, um, the kitchen is a waterfall. <laughs> we have water running down all the walls and out of the ceiling. And um, it's just very calm. And, um, I, I feel a little bit like these times feel a little bit like that waterfall moment, right? This mm -hmm. is, there's a sense of urgency and a pace of change that's happening really fast. I said, that's great. I, I'll, I'm going to go to the insurance company on the way in and I'll be right there because I'm right here in front of them. And so I stopped and I got the, you know, the, the long-term cleaner so we don't get mold. And by the time I got to the office 20 minutes later, the kitchen had been cleaned out. The electric company had been called. Somebody had already moved their office to another space that was dry and was conducting business that needed to be done. And by 10 o'clock in the morning, it was just go because everybody had stepped in to do something that they could step in to do. And had I resorted to sort of leadership from the top down, uh, we wouldn't have been ready for a week to go to work. So the fact that everybody got to step in uh, and do what they could and took that initiative um, got us up and going. And then I guess the, the humorous part of the day was later when I peeled back a wet wall upstairs. You know, I was calm, cool, and collect. 
until that moment, because at that moment I opened it up to see where the, the break might be, and three bats blew out, uh, blew out of the wall at me, and I screamed all the way down the stairs and out the front door. <laughs> so I had my moment where I lost my composure, but I think it was justified, and the rest of the team rallied again around and um, made sure the bats were safe and I was safe. So, you know, I, I, <laughs> it's a fond memory, uh, and I, I think these times are like a waterfall time. Bring the whole team in. Surfing on what you just said, Kate, uh, I think one of the pillars of our humanity is also our sense of humor. It's certainly one of the things that I appreciate the most of this team. Every time that we have our virtual calls, there's always room for laughter and there's always room for that, that part of the caringness, which is so important in these times and in life in general, right? You made me laugh so much right now with your story with the bats flying out and uh, I think that that's a really beautiful way of leading, of like sharing, making time for us as teams, virtual teams, to breathe together, to, to really be honest and, and, and together, you know, do a small meditation or a small breathing because it is important and we, we all are feeling high levels of anxiety and to be able to laugh together or to be like, let's do couple of breaths together, I think it's essential to navigate these times better. I think it's the wisdom of our togetherness that's emerging in beautiful ways. I'm glad you got a laugh. <laughs> Just recently, um, in the last couple of weeks, we were getting ready to, Travis and I were getting ready to send out the newsletter and it was a Friday morning and this, it all just came rushing to me like a waterfall, everything that's been going on and the waterworks came and the tears came and the vulnerability came and the, the fear and the sadness and all of it. And Travis was there holding me in space and he said something that really made me stop and not just rush through it and say, I just want to make sure that, you know, you take your, the space you need and we don't just rush on to the details and the deadline of what we need to get done and that you really are able to express how you feel completely and openly and fully. And we had that moment and I so appreciate it. To this to this moment now and he really stepped in and helped me in a time where I, I needed that guidance and he was open and caring and we had some good laughs and it was just a beautiful moment and being there for each other and holding each other compassionately and listening and really caring for the other person Thank you for reflecting that back, Melissa. Um, <clears throat> a couple ideas that came to me. One is around family. I think a lot of people who aren't used to working at home are at home now uh, for days and weeks at a time. And um, that's new for a lot of families and a lot of relationships and people that are used to being at work, you know, eight hours a day, uh, maybe commuting before that. And so it, it's a lot, it's a lot of shift really quickly. And I think about <clears throat> working at home now for over 10 years myself, what I've learned about being at home and balancing the deadlines with the dishes and, you know, the meetings with the laundry and like the balance of both being home and also wanting to create a space for yourself where you can work and you can focus. And I think there's a lot of sharing that goes on in families, whether it's in your relationship or in parenting. And uh, we have a five month old that we are sharing responsibility for and trying to support each other with. And um, I think there's a lot of shared leadership lessons at home, a lot in our families and our relationships. And a story that came up for me with Tristan, what you shared that I haven't reflected on much, but my dad when he took over as a plant manager years ago, 
um, had a CEO who retired and then became a janitor within the organization. And my dad was the plant manager <clears throat> and would often sit down and talk with the janitor, former CEO of the company. And just that visual is really powerful and I think drives home the point of what shared leadership is about and about care for an organization, care for people, um, the humility that anyone in an organization has so much to share and that we can learn from everyone. And, and that in his case, he could have retired obviously and never come back to work again, but he knew that he wanted to be involved and he stayed involved in a very humble and uh, servant leader way. And that's stayed with me. It stayed with my dad. And I, I love that story uh, and all the stories that they shared over the years of learning from each other and, um, so I love this prompt also. Thank you, Lori and, and team. It's wonderful to hear from everybody. Mm. Yeah, for sure it is. And uh, what I'd love to share, uh, this is this is Lori again, and, and what I'd love to share is um, for, uh, for anyone within the organization to remember not only to look inward at how you can be sharing uh, deeply and tapping into the collective wisdom of your teams, um, but also with your suppliers and outside stakeholders. Um, my dad taught me too. My dad um, uh, founded an, uh, three corrugated box companies, uh, three throughout New England. And, one of the things he also said to always said to me is, is, you know, uh, it's never about even the bottom line first and foremost. Um, uh, it's never about the bricks and mortar. It's never about the bottom line. It is always first and forward about relationships. And, uh, it's where some of the, uh, the roots of these frameworks come from that we have. And, and, uh, he would say like, always remember to have a genuine relationship with your banker, uh, and and with your 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 other stakeholders in in your business, um, and he always knew everybody's name, of their partners' names, their children's names, like really genuinely, you know, connected with them and built relationships over the years that stood him in great stead throughout the career of the, of his business, and uh, and so I want to say too, like remember your suppliers, and it can be such a vulnerable thing to say, like we're running out of cash soon and 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 to, to feel like we have to hide that so that our community does not know that we're at risk and um and it's a fine edge but um i think that this is a time for the paradigm shift of being brave and trusting our larger community uh that we will you know another way that we're going to get through this together is to give our community as much information and transparency as possible including our suppliers and so instead of just cutting off your suppliers without any conversation with them or saying you know like we're going to assume that they don't want to you know work for free or or for a little while or to or to help you know to help us in some way like you're never going to know if you don't engage them in the conversation and you're just cutting reducing your potential down uh, so much by what could be possible by not taking the time, even as you feel you have to move very quickly to make these decisions, but it's the turtle in the hair where we can slow down to, to go farther and, and, and even go faster in that way together. And, and so to include them and see what's possible between you and what you may be able to do. And maybe you take it week by week or, or two weeks at a time or in some very digestible way and then check back in because so much as Kate said is changing so fast, but remember to have those conversations and to share leadership in all directions right now uh, in service to the health uh, and creative ways that you may go forward that may bond you and forge you uh, even more, uh, not less. And, and, and another way that we're gonna lift all boats at this time and uh and so is there any way anyone else wants to close this out or say goodbye or we all good so all right so then we're just we're we're blowing you kisses out there we're blowing you kisses we're we're sending you love we thank you for for your own journeys for yourselves and we're here with you um and uh we look forward to continuing the conversation in many ways our very best to you and thank you for your bravery. Bye for now.